Numerous training institutions and online resources are bragging that learning Python can significantly improve business efficiency. Maybe. Programming indeed can automate many tedious and challenging tasks, saving considerable time. Unfortunately, Python may seem quite hard and overwhelming for you. Even, its difficulty is so great that you can't understand why you are unable to master it. The data processed in daily work is mostly Excel spreadsheets, and there is a term called structured data. To support daily tasks, programming languages should possess robust structured data processing capabilities. Python needs a third-party package called Pandas to process structured data. Pandas is not a native library in Python. You need to download and install it separately. The process may be complex and may involve some daunting configuration. Some Python installation packages have Pandas built in, but they also come with a variety of configurations. After all, they are designed for professional use, so it's not surprising that the configurations are complex. Debugging is necessary since code is rarely perfect on the first try. However, Python development environments are often inconvenient for debugging, and since Pandas is not native to Python, this adds complexity to the process. Nonetheless, these are still minor troubles that can be tolerated. The bigger problem is that Pandas is not designed for structured data, leading to many confusing aspects. We comprehend it through examples, such as this table. Each row, except for the first one, is referred to as a record, corresponding to an event, a person, an order, etc. The first row serves as the title, indicating the attributes that comprise the record. All these records share the same attributes, and the entire table is a set of these records. Pandas mainly uses something called data frame to process this type of table data. The table above appears as this after being loaded into a data frame. It looks similar to Excel, except that the row numbers start from zero. First, try to count the number of people in each department. The expected result should look like this. Code according to natural thinking which means grouping by department and counting. The calculation result is like this. It seems to have done the same action for each column. That's strange. This is because a data frame is essentially a matrix, and when count is applied to the matrix, it counts every column. Unexpected, right? So how can we correctly output the number of people in each department? Here we should use the size function, which is used to check the number of members in each group. However, this result is no longer a two-dimensional data frame, but a one-dimensional series, which is a new type of set and cannot utilize data frame methods. Wouldn't it be better to stick with the data frame as the grouping summary result is still a data table with rows and columns? Why introduce something new? It's quite puzzling. The sets of pandas are not limited to just these two types. For example, the essence of grouping operation is to partition a large set into small ones and the result should be a set of sets. Let's take a look at what happens after grouping the data frame. What is this? Is this a set of sets? Google it and you can find that this is called an iterable object, consisting of a data frame and a group index. It resembles submatrices of a large matrix and can be somewhat considered a set of sets. However, it does not behave like an ordinary set, which can directly retrieve a member by its sequential number such as group zero. It's estimated that many people have already fainted at this point and cannot figure out what nonsense is being talked about here. Well, that's right. This is the normal state for non-professionals. There are many analogous sets in Python, each with its own adaptation scenarios and operational rules, which can be perplexing. The transitions between them are remarkably smooth, and without careful attention, you might compute something unfamiliar. Therefore, programming basically relies on Googling, and you don't know why even you've got it working, and you'll have to Google again next time. Let's continue with another example, sorting the employees of each department by their entry time from earliest to latest. What we need to do is simply sort the subsets by their entry time after grouping. The approach is written as follows. Using a for loop to process data bit by bit does not showcase the advantages of set data processing. Such lengthy code is not much different from VBA, which Python often criticizes. In fact, 
Python has an implementation without using for, which can make the code shorter. Please note the most crucial statement that is second to last here, which includes apply and lambda. This is the concept of functional programming, the difficulty of which is far beyond the capability of most non-professionals. You can try googling it yourself to see if you can understand it. In summary, the data frame is more akin to a matrix than a set of records. It should be approached with a matrix mindset, as this perspective can lead to detours that result in unexpected outcomes. What's even more troublesome is that Python has too many similar sets, such as series, data frame, list, data frame group by. Each has its own rules, making them somewhat elusive. Grasping these principles and applying them correctly is something that non-professionals cannot and should not attempt, given the difficulty and complexity involved. There are also things like apply plus lambda. If you don't use them, the code for batch data processing is too verbose. If you try to use them, they are quite difficult to understand. In fact, Python is a highly professional tool, primarily used by heavy professionals, mainly those working in artificial intelligence. For non-professionals, mastering Python can be quite challenging. Its power and convenience only exist in training classes. Then, except for Python, what other option is there? There is Esprit Desktop. Esprit Desktop provides a powerful programming language SPL with strong structured data processing capabilities and is easy to learn, far less difficult than Python. Esprit Desktop supports install and play without any configuration issues with third-party packages. SPL code is written in a grid similar to Excel, and programming is akin to writing Excel formulas, making it suitable for non-professionals. Cell names are natural variable names, which intuitively reference previous calculation results and are very familiar to Excel users. View the results of each step at any time on the right panel automatically displayed in a tabular format. Grid indentation can also effectively indicate code scope, making it very intuitive. The data type of SPL is much simpler, with only one type of set. For example, group and count, simply use count after grouping. SPL maintains consistency in type both before and after grouping and allows continued calculations using the same functions. Further example, after simple grouping, it remains a set after grouping, enabling retrieval of specific groups using the sequence numbers without creating anything new. The functional language of SPL has become intangible, no longer obscure and elusive. For example, sorting the employees of each department after grouping. Just add one line after the grouping code. The code is much simpler than Python. An Excel formula writer can basically understand it. Another slightly more complex task, to find the longest consecutive rising days for each stock. SPL effortlessly solves it in a few lines, with the key code being just one line, without any need for loop statements. Python, on the other hand, is much more verbose and typically requires an explicit loop. Esprit Desktop also offers the SPLXLL plugin, enabling direct execution of SPL code within Excel thereby addressing Excel's limitations. For example, finding the star products that make it to the top 10 every month can be challenging using Excel's intersection feature. SPL's set operations are much more powerful, allowing for concise formulas that can directly produce the desired results. SPL is simple to learn and, once mastered, enables efficient management of daily tasks. Esprit Desktop is free to use and offers abundant resources such as books, courses, and Excel routines. Folks who want to learn programming for improving business efficiency, hurry up and download it to give it a try.